If you're laughing at this Windows 95 advert, I'm right there with you. But what you might not realize is this advertisement can be useful for thinking about economic systems. Are we really doing this? Yeah. All right. You know, it took me a little time to see it, but you're right. When we think about economic systems, we naturally think capitalism and communism. America and Karl Marx. That communism kind of sucks and capitalism is decent. But we sweep some sadness under the rug. <laughs> Meet lazy. But that's not the only way to look at economics. If we take a really broad worldview of economic systems, we find one, some economic models are more popular in specific areas, and two, certain economic models are more popular during certain times. Yeah, sometimes it helps me to chart it on a timeline. So, anarchy, bartering, feudalism, mercantilism, dharma, or whatever India had, capitalism, communism, socialism. And instead of looking at it politically, like, why is Chinese communism bad, but instead historically, we get questions like, Why did some societies ever use feudalism over capitalism? And why do others now choose communism over capitalism? These are interesting questions. <laughs> and perhaps surprisingly, but these same questions can also apply to computer operating systems. Like, why do we use Windows 95 then, but now Windows 10? And why do some people use OS X over Windows? And why do some use Linux over both? If we stop and just imagine capitalism or feudalism or any economic model just as being the downloaded software a country uses to run itself, then we can kind of see the similarities. You're right. Like, I think both choosing an economic model and computer operating system probably come from precisely the same motivations. Societies wound up using an economic model like mercantilism because of the advantages or efficiencies they thought it might give them. Just like a designer is more likely to use a Mac over a Windows. Precisely. Societies structure economics around their mores and how the people in power think a market should operate. It's why we don't let toddlers work, even though that's anti-free market. Please, sir. I want some more. <laughs> but they made such great chimney sweeps. Do you even have a chimney? <laughs> no, but okay, okay, there's another parallel observation too. So we all know sometimes computer operating systems get popular and offer any utility to the user, but because of a fad and momentum. When your friends have Windows, you're likely to have Windows on your computer, even if you'd be better off with Linux. In fact, you start thinking Windows is better, even though you've never experienced the other. I actually went up onto the University of Kansas campus the other day and asked students why they're using the operating system they're using. <laughs> the basic reply was, I don't know, it's just what I use at home. Like Windows? Windows? Yeah. Can I ask why you use it? Because I have a um, I use <laughs> Windows. I just always have used Windows because... This zeitgeist happens with economic systems too. Throughout history, economic models have become popular, like capitalism or communism. They sweep into a region and suddenly everyone's lives around you are based on that system. It's what you get used to. People even get in arguments about which model is best, just like operating systems. But like, did you know capitalism first started in the Netherlands, then spread to England, then the 13 colonies? <laughs> yeah, I think people forget that capitalism isn't totally an American thing. And I guess this explains a bit why capitalism fails to take off in parts of Africa. Their culture and society is used to running a different software. They value different things, family over community, relationships over achievements. So there's inertia behind their economic operating system over, say, Western capitalism. Yeah, that's true. But economics doesn't exist in a vacuum. Wait, what kind of vacuum? You know, absent of anything else. Globally, we build upon economic models over time, hopefully making them better. Moving forward from feudalism to mercantilism to regulated capitalism and, you know, getting rid of slavery. Yeah, it still mimics like computers do with operating systems, going from DOS to Windows to XP, eliminating bugs in the system as we get more advanced. But okay, there's kind of a deep thought here. If we reduce economics to just societal and cultural software, which it kind of is, and that whatever the prevalent economic theory is dictates how we live and operate our lives. It begs the question, is there one ideal software for us, and when we stumble upon it, will everyone live a more fair, egalitarian life? Or is our future but a series of endlessly refined updates to capitalism, like a computer and nothing more? Interesting analogy, right? <laughs> sure. Like any way it goes, cause I know